Hey! Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Photo Justice Photo Moment, first live daily photography show on the YouTubes, as far as I know. I'm going to keep saying it. Uh, Yash, hello and welcome. <laughs> the only good thing about Monday is this show. Well, Yash, I appreciate that. Thank you very much, buddy. And to anybody else who is watching live, you know what to do. Throw out a little hello in the comments. It's always lovely to hear from you. And I hope you had a fabulous weekend. Today, we are going two things. We're going to do a little unboxing of this really expensive switcher, uh, um, uh, streamer. And I have a little surprise at the end, something that I just learned that I'm very excited to share with you. So good morning, Novak. Welcome again. It's so good to have repeat viewers coming back into here. So uh, what are we doing Friday? I have no idea what I was going to talk about Fridays, but I don't remember what we did. So that's okay. Just make sure that you're involved, engaging, commenting today. So what are we talking about? We're talking about this thing, this, this thing here. Nope, that's the wrong thing. Well, that's interesting. My screen isn't showing up there. Why isn't the screen showing up there? Okay, well, I guess uh, I guess I didn't quite get that part set up yet. No, properly did I? Let me just very quickly figure out why you can't see this screen. So it's kind of interesting little part of the whole switching thing here. Everything has to be everything has to be uh, going into the switcher at 1080p, so 1920 by 1080 at 24p, not 2398, 24p, which also means 24 hertz coming off of this screen. And so it looks like for some reason when I made the when I plugged my laptop back in this morning, oh yeah, it switched over to this screen, not to the switcher, which why is Java running? Who wants Java? Which is means it doesn't work. So let's see, HDMI scaled, scaled. All right, there we go. Scaled 1080p. I'll show you this in a second. I'll pull this up. Because it's, it's kind of interesting. It's just part of how this whole thing has to switch together. I can't show it to you until it's done because then it doesn't sync up. Now it should be syncing. Bingo, there it is. So if we look at my computer now, I have to set up. So this whole thing right here, I, I know I changed this recently. This has appeared. This is a 4K monitor, um, just a standard LG 4K monitor. UHD 4K is double 1080p. And so I'm running this at non-retina resolution if it were a Mac display. And um, so it looks kind of a little bit fuzzy and soft here. But... I need to run at exactly 1920 by 1080 at exactly 24 hertz, which is what you see here, right? There's 1080p and 24 hertz. That is what's required for this to sync up. This is the monitor that I'm looking at. It doesn't matter if that's not at 24 hertz and it can't go to, but this is the mirroring hardware. That's the um, the converting the HDMI signal to the SDI, and that has to be at exactly 24 hertz. Anyway, when I plug everything in, sometimes it doesn't automatically sync up and I gotta go fix it manually. Um, but so that's this display. And the reason that I'm using this display now instead of just going off the laptop is because I'm going to be doing a series of recordings that I will be doing at full UHD off the screen. So basically retina display 1920 by 1080. It's the new photos training that I'm, uh, I'm about to start recording. Kind of cool. Anyway, um, so that's that. So quick little shout outs. Who else is here? Mr. Sean Mark Nipper is very excited. I think he knows why. I think he thinks he knows why. He hopes he knows why. We're going to find out if he's right. And um, Novex says, evening to those in Africa. Well, good evening to you in Africa. Uh, Yash had an awesome weekend. Wonderful. And Jose Saldana, I think you're new. I don't think I've seen you pop up before. You managed to be on time. Excellent. And good morning. And Jess says good morning or good afternoon for those of us who watched during lunch. Um, congrats on 2K subs. Did I hit 2K subs? That's awesome. I think that the sub counter, the public one, kind of rounds up. Um, it's probably a little bit under 2K, but thank you anyway, very much so. Okay, so we are looking at this piece of madness today. This is the Epifan Pearl 2. This is an unboxing of a ridiculous piece of streaming hardware that with a 4K feature. Where they apparently sent me the one with a 4K add-on. It is an $8,000 switcher. Now, it actually gets even more expensive than that if you get the rack mounted and then there's this whole double switching thing. I'm not really sure what's in the box. We're going to find out because I actually have not opened oh, good morning, it's heavy, the shipping container yet. So there's the shipping container. Really? would you, I wouldn't put Pearl on the... I've never even seen that before until I look at it on camera here. I wouldn't put that on my shipping box because someone who knows what it is might get some ideas. Let's open this thing up. So... Epifan, you may recall, is the company that um, makes the makes the uh, what's it called the Webcaster X1 that I've been trying to use, trying to test for quite some time now, and hasn't yet worked. It has thus far failed us. And I said this before when they said they wanted to send this thing to me, I'm like that's kind of gutsy because I really haven't been very kind to the product that the X1 that they first sent to me, which has not yet worked. Now. 
This one, I'm quite sure they're going to want this one back. Uh, we'll see about that. But God, at, uh, at $8,000 for this thing, I could see why they might want it back. So in theory, this will allow me to stream at immense quality in full 4K. What's kind of cool is everything that you're looking at here, this camera, the whole switching system is all 4K. We're just doing this show at 1080p because let's face it, most people aren't even streaming that. Most people are streaming at 720. So, um, oh wow, cool. Comes in a Pelican kind of case. Good Lord. Oh, now that's a pretty badass way to ship a product. Congrats on that. That's kind of cool. Um, apparently, it'll allow me to stream 4K. That's kind of cool. So once we get this whole thing set up, which is not going to happen overnight, this is undoubtedly going to take some time. Um, it is. Uh, uh, we're going to try doing this show in 4K. <laughs> Why not? Because we can. And Sean's saying I got 2,059 subs. Wow! So I actually did break 2K. Well, super. Well, thank you to everyone then. That is really awesome. All right. Uh, let's see what's in here. Something locked here. I don't know. Oh, there we go. Excellent. Ah, has that fresh smell of glue. All right, let's see here. Quick start guides, stickers. We always need more stickers. And then this is the box. Ta da! Let's get this thing out of the plastic and then get a close up deal. Okay, so this is the. Let's see what else is in here, real quick. Cables, power cables. Let's get. Uh, can I switch to this camera? Uh. Oh, wrong one. Dang it. One of these days. Honestly, one of these days. There we go. Let's see. We've got HDMI cables, power cables, SDI cables, Ethernet cables. What is this? Oh, DVI to HDMI adapter. Power. Oh, these are different uh, nationality power cords. Okay, cool. So that's all power. Let's get this thing out of the way. Good Lord. That is a box and a half, I will say. I would like to close this so I can actually set it down without breaking anything. Am I done? How is this? What? There we go. Aha. Okay. Jesus, this thing is heavy. Okay. Oops, that's upside down. Let's see what this thing looks like inside and the back. It's got a lot of uh, ports on it. That's impressive. There we go. That it's kind of pretty. Switch back to this camera. The Pearl 2 Epifan Video. I have no idea what any of these buttons do yet, because, you know, like you just saw, <laughs> I just unboxed it. Let's see what's on the back. We've got XLR inputs, 12G SDI input. That's our 4K SDI. Um, four HDMI. See, they're labeled A, B, A, B. So one of these is, oh, 4K and 2K. Okay, so we got two HD and two 4K HDMI inputs. HDMI out, couple USB ports. God knows what those are for. And good old analog audio in, and then what looks like a VGA port. God knows what that's for. Probably some kind of expansion port, actually. Let's take a quick look at the back of this thing. Let's go this way. There we go. So there we go. So you've got your XLR. Are those all inputs? Hold on. What does that say? That says left and right, left, right, A, B, A, B. Okay, so I guess it's a stair. I guess they're all inputs. Um, so XLR's in, this analog audio, God knows why you'd want that, where we go. analog audio, um, no idea. This is really hard to do backwards. No idea what these things are. So these HDMIs, you can see HDMI, A, B, A, B are all there. Um, 4K, one, two of them are 4K, right? Those are 4K, those are HD. And then the SDI inputs. So. In theory, what I'll be able to do is take my signal from the switcher, plug it in here and hit go. Uh, do not know yet what the configuration interface is because I, I don't have played with it, obviously. Um, presumably some kind of web interface, hopefully. Hopefully it's not plug in a USB keyboard and mouse and do it on the screen because that's kind of a crappy way to do it. And uh, just as the case looks heavier than the problem. No, this is, this is heavy, this is heavy, but we like heavy hardware. Heavy hardware means good. Right, and that's the theory. So that's it. That's all we're going to do with this thing. I'm not going to turn it on because this is clearly like a. I got a. They said, hey, if you want to do training on this thing, we'll go through that um, with you, which is great because someone's got to show me how this thing works. This is a monster, but in theory, this will be better than. Let's see. Where's my little? All right, grab this thing. Let's just see what happens, and hopefully, I don't have the same 
audio problems that have these guys. This is the same manufacturer. Like I said, they're gutsy sending this thing out here. But for eight thousand dollars, it better work. Okay, that was fun. So, um, you guys want to hear a surprise? I'll just leave this here. You want to hear a surprise? I found out Friday night. A GH5 is going to be shipped to me today for arrival tomorrow. I will have it for the rest of the week to shoot with. I'm flying to Florida on Monday. I got to bring it back with me and return it in person. Lumix GH5 on its way to me now. I think I just heard Sean scream like a little girl. It's, it's coming. Um, and I am going to, I've already planned out a litany of test shots. So I was trying to figure out what I'm going to do with this thing. I'm going to get this GH5 for a couple of days. What am I going to do? I'm going to shoot, shoot a short film. Um, what are we going to do? And what I decided is instead of trying to build a story, I basically am going to have 48 hours to shoot because Friday morning I leave for the weekend and can't continue shooting the story that I'm shooting here. And then I come back Sunday night and then leave again Monday morning. So, so I st decided instead of trying to shoot a story, um, I'm just going to do a series of test shots. And so the GH5 is one of its big things is 4K 60p. So of course we'll be shooting at that. It shoots, I forget now, it's at 180 frame per second in HD. So great for slow motion. So we're gonna do shots like that. Focus tracking is one of the big, big deals. So we're gonna do focus tracking tests for both video and for still photography. And basically anything else, <laughs> Sean's saying he can't breathe, anything else that we can come up with. I will release a series of short YouTube videos with all the tests in them in a series because I, I want to show you UHD 4K at 60p, but then I want to show you 1080p stuff and I can't scale them um, or else you know you won't see the full quality. So we will release a series of videos at each individual frame rate and or frame size as the test is ensued. So that is all already being plotted. The shots that we're going to do, uh, so I live in Ashland, which we have a little mountain, Mount Ashland, which is a ski mountain, a little one, but it's a ski mountain. I got a friend who works on the mountain and we met last night. We've got this um, hopefully arranged. He's going to talk to um, talk to his boss today. But ideally, we're going to go up there on Wednesday because it comes Tuesday. I got Wednesday and Thursday to shoot. Wednesday, the mountain is closed, but we can still use it. So we're going to go up there with a couple skiers and do a bunch of skiing shots. Now, the weather is supposed to be crap, which would be a bummer for the light. But you know what? Even if it's raining up there, which let's hope it's not raining because that'd be ugly. Hey, the camera's weatherproof, so it could totally should totally survive that. No problem. Weatherproof and freeze proof, so they say. So there we go. We're going to do a whole bunch of these shots and I will edit those together and put them together as quickly as possible, but I am going to do this nicely. So it's not like you're not going to see this stuff on Thursday. It'll take me a little bit of time to put it together with little intros and outros for each shot, but we will get GH5 content, GH5 test footage. And as far as I know, this will be the first GH5, like just full on test footage like this that's out there. There are short films that were done on the cameras quite some time ago, which given I know how this stuff works, the cameras that those guys had are probably... Um, uh, well, it had to be very early production units, and they might have been the kind of things where you know only these three modes work type of a thing. So they're very limited on what they could shoot. This one is supposed to be, it's still a pre-production unit, but it should be uh, essentially fully functional. There might be a couple of little weirdness things in there, of course, because it's obviously it is pre-production. But as far as I know, it should be a pretty much fully functional camera. So I am crazy super excited about this. So that is going to happen on Wednesday and Thursday. Tomorrow, Tuesday, I am going to be setting up one of these live streaming rooms for a client. It's a much smaller version of it, but we're going to start setting that up at nine o'clock. So with any luck, we will stream live from there and I'll show you what we're doing, show you a little setup. So you'll be able to see a little bit behind the scenes on setting up a, a much lower end version than what we're doing here, but a relatively low cost streaming setup, a dedicated streaming room. So we'll be talking about that tomorrow as well. Uh, let's see here, real quick, other comments coming in. Uh, where are we? Uh, Dimitri said, nice, looking forward to your footage. Thank you, give us loads of sample footage. I will. I don't know, I gotta talk to Panasonic. I don't know if I can release the sample footage unedited for download, but then I'd have to pay for hosting on that. And these are gonna be big files. So I probably won't, but it'll all be on YouTube. And what I'll put on YouTube will be unedited, or if I have to edit something, uh, I will obviously say so. I'll put disclaimers in there, but everything will be marked with what it is. Um, no vaccine, can I have it after you? No. <laughs> uh, really looking forward to the GH5 stuff. Thank you, Jose says, we'll be using ND filters and such or no filter testing. I have one variable ND filter. It's good. It's not the greatest filter in the world. Um, it does, it goes weird at its darkest settings. Uh, I should have spent more money on an ND filter. If I have to, I will, because, you know, sometimes you just have to. 
But given that I'll be shooting in the snow, I might have to, but I'm really hoping not to. Lens quality isn't what I'm really trying to test here though. It's more the camera capability, so I'm not gonna be too disappointed if I have to do it. But if it is overcast, then we should have no problem. If it's full on sun in the snow, then I'm probably gonna have to use an ND filter, but we'll see what happens. Um, will I test low light? Jess is asking. Yes, absolutely. That is another one of those. I mentioned, I did not add that. I did not mention that, but that is already on my list. I will do low light, uh, depending on when we're doing. Apparently there's nighttime skiing on Thursday night, but I'm also leaving early Friday morning. So I don't know if I'll be able to do that. At minimum, I'll do some stuff in the studio, low light, you know, maybe do your match sample test footage, something like that. I'll, I'll try to get some real world low light stuff. Maybe just go downtown on uh, on Wednesday night with the camera, or even Tuesday night with the camera. But yes, I will absolutely do some low light testing as well. That's not going to be my primary focus. My primary focus is going to be focus tracking and the high frame rate in 4K and, U and HD. Those are my main focuses. But yes, I will do low light. Um, and plus one to low light. Someone else wants it. So that's great. Um, Dimitri says that's good enough. Well, hey, I will do what I can. Okay, so that is that so tuesday tuesday tomorrow is the um setting up the broadcast room wednesday is we'll be shooting with it so we will be out and about sean now you know why i tried now I, why now you know why i booked you on wednesday so sean's going to come shoot some behind the scenes and um possibly do a, a live stream that might be tough from the mountain there's not great signal up there but we'll see what we can get and uh and then thursday We'll see. It depends on how Wednesday goes. And then Friday, I'm I'm out. So Friday is not going to be a show because I'm going to be on the road and out of town. Okay. Oh, 6K, 6K photo mode. Yes, absolutely. That is absolutely on the list too. 6K photo mode will be fantastic for ski stuff, right? So like jumps. Um, I don't know if it depends on who we get at last minute. We might do like if we can get some guy doing flips or spins or you know whatever. I don't ski. So whatever kind of tricks you guys skiers do, we're going to get some of that. Also, I am going to be in Bend on Saturday. And um, I've already been connected with a pro skier there who is down to model for me. So um, if it all goes to hell on Wednesday here, the weather's crap, whatever, I've got Saturday as a backup. So that's going to be fun. So yeah, 6K photo and 4K, right? Because 6K photo, and I forget the... I forget the frame rate now. Um, was it 6K photos at 30 frame, right? And then 4K photo at 60 frame, I think. So you've got, in, in whatever it is, you got an insane number of frames to pull from at either eight or, no, 12 or 18 megapixel. I think 18 megapixel 6K photo, I don't know. Yeah, we'll figure it out and we'll let you guys know. That's the plan. So there you go. Um, yeah, oh, hey, one more thing. What time is it? It's, uh, okay, in 12 minutes, I gotta reset this thing. I am doing a live training. This is for my photoapps.expert brand. I'm doing a live training on mobile photography. And we're going to talk about using a camera and one of these and one of these um, with Lightroom. It should be fun. Uh, and that'll go live. So those like these, well, everything is free on the Photo Moments show, but the live training are free when they're live and then they go behind a paywall after that. So if you want to check it out, you can watch it live starting in uh, in 11 minutes at photoapps.expert slash live. And, and and if you can't see it live, then you can just catch it afterwards. Um, he's got to pay a few bucks and that's all good. Okay, uh, what else do I need to talk about? That's it, like, hey, I got little notes here. Now tell me, I even have a note telling me which direction to put if I'm gonna put a, a thing. There's no thing, don't click, there's nothing to click on. Um, don't forget to like, like or don't like, just if you don't like, tell me why. Don't be a troll. I've had a couple of them showing up, it's been interesting. Uh, and subscribe. There's a thing about to come up. You can hit there to subscribe. Thanks, guys. See you tomorrow. See you soon. Bye.